Hello and a warm welcome to the AI with Arun show. This week, we are talking about China launching a literal Manhattan project for chips. The US government federalizing all AI laws to block states like California and OpenAI releasing a model that does not just write code, it finds cyber vulnerabilities in real time. At AI with Arun show, we have analyzed multiple distinct reports this week to bring you the top critical AI news you need to know this week. Let's dive in. First up, the biggest geopolitical news of the month. On December 17th, writers reported that China has officially launched a state-backed program explicitly called the Manhattan Project for AI chips. Why that name? Because just like the atomic bomb project in the 1940s, this is a massive government-funded sprint for survival. They are investing billions to break the US export blockade and achieve total semiconductor self-sufficiency. The market reacted instantly. A Chinese AI firm called MetaX saw its stock explode, surging 700% after its IPO in Beijing. Investors are betting that the Chinese government will pour infinite money into this until they win. The key takeaway is this. The global supply chain is splitting in two. We now have a Western stack and an Eastern stack, and they are stopping talking to each other. The US is not sitting still. The Department of Energy has launched something called the Genesis Mission. They have signed deals with 24 partners, including big tech, to use AI for critical national infrastructure like fusion energy and climate resilience. But here is the drama. The White House is tightening the screws on NVIDIA. They have launched a new review into NVIDIA's sales to China, fearing even the slower chips are helping Chinese military clusters. Meanwhile, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang has become a geopolitical diplomat. Reports say he's lobbying the White House, acting as a mediator, because his chips are now a bargaining chip in the global trade talks. Think of it this way. NVIDIA is no longer just a tech company. It's a branch of foreign policy. As the US and China fight, other countries are cashing in. Vietnam has emerged as a neutral zone Intel and Samsung just announced multi-billion dollar packaging facilities there. Packaging is the final stage of a chip making. It's like putting the brain inside the skull. Over in the Middle East, Microsoft and G42 opened a massive responsible AI center in Abu Dhabi. And keep an eye on Russia. Putin has just ordered a national task force to build their own generative AI to evade sanctions. If you can't make the chips, you host the data center. That is the new oil. But not everyone is happy. A coalition led by South Africa, Kenya and Nigeria is fighting back against what they call AI colonialism. They are drafting a governance pact demanding that African data stays on African servers. They want AI models trained on their language, Swahili, Yoruba, not just English. This comes as the Global AI Index shows Africa is lagging behind in infrastructure. And why does this matter? Because data is the new natural resource. These nations are saying, you can't just mine our data for free anymore. All right, section two, let's talk about the model wars and the tech breakthroughs. OpenAI's GPT 5.2 and the Amazon Pivot. Let's talk about these. OpenAI dropped a bombshell. They are in talks for a $10 billion investment from Amazon. This is a huge pivot. OpenAI has mostly relied on Microsoft but now they are looking to use Amazon's proprietary chips to train their models. They also released GPT 5.2. This model is a beast. It prioritizes economic output, a metric they call GDP Val, and it beats everyone on reasoning. They even released a version called Codex that is so good at finding cyber flaws, they had to restrict who can use it under a preparedness framework. The takeaway is this, OpenAI is diversifying. They don't want to be dependent on just one cloud provider. So what is Google doing? They are of course not sleeping. They released Gemini 3 Flash. The key word here is Flash. This model matches the intelligence of the big pro models, but runs three times faster. Why does speed matter? Because of agents. If you want an AI to do 50 steps for you, like booking a vacation, it needs to be fast and cheap. Gemini 3 Flash 
makes those complex workflows economically possible for the first time. Google also deepened ties with the US government, partnering DeepMind with British agencies to solve medical and climate problems. The most important concept of 2025 is agentic AI. We are moving from chatbots that talk to agents that do. MasterCard just launched Agent Pay. This is a protocol that lets AI agents hold a digital wallet and actually spend money with limits you set. Imagine your AI negotiating a hotel price and paying for it while you sleep. Databricks sees this coming too. They just raised $4 billion at a massive $134 billion valuation to build agent bricks, tools for companies to build agents on their own private data. The shift, we are entering the transaction era of AI. But running all these agents takes too much electricity. That is why hardware is getting weird. A startup called Mythic raised $125 million for analog chips. Unlike digital chips, that are ones and zeros, these work like dimmer switches. They are 100 times more energy efficient. Another company, Unconventional AI, raised nearly half a billion dollars to build chips that mimic the human brain structure. The future of AI hardware might not be digital GPUs. It might be biology-inspired analog chips. Let's talk about section three, which is follow the money. Needless to say, there are valuation explosions and bubble fears. Is there a bubble? Wall Street can't decide. In mid-December, markets dipped on bubble fears, but then rebounded days later. The reality is the money is just moving. It's moving into security. A company called Sierra, which protects data in the cloud, just raised $400 million at a $9 billion valuation. Investors know that if companies are going to use AI, they need to secure their data first. The reality it's not a bubble bursting. It's the market maturing. The money is flowing to infrastructure and safety. You know AI has taken over when Time magazine names the architects of AI as portion of the year. This list includes Sam Altman, Jensen Huang, Elon Musk, and Dario Amodei. These eight or so individuals now hold more power over the global economy than most heads of state. They control the compute, the models, and the code that runs our world. On the legal front, President Trump just signed a massive executive order. The goal? To federalize AI regulation. This order stops states like California from creating their own safety rules. It even creates a litigation task force to sue states that try to regulate AI. The administration argues that this is necessary to win the race against China. Speed over red, but civil rights experts are warning this removes protections against algorithmic discrimination. That is, the takeaway is that the U.S. is choosing acceleration as a national policy. While the U.S. deregulates, the rest of the world is tightening up. Australia just passed the Truth in Media law. It requires a cryptographic watermark on all AI content. If platforms don't label deep fakes, they face fines of 5% of their global revenue. And Disney, they aren't suing. They are buying. They invested $1 billion in OpenAI to license their characters properly. They're trying to solve the copyright war with a checkbook. Now, why do we need these laws? Because trust is collapsing. A horrifying story came out of Australia, where viral images of a crisis actor at a tragedy were proven to be AI-generated disinformation. It caused real-world harassment based on a lie. And in banking, Voice cloning fraud is up 400%. Banks are scrambling to stop using voice passwords because AI can now mimic you perfectly. The rule is this. In 2026, if it's not watermarked or cryptographically signed, don't trust it. So let's move on to section 5, which is AI in the real world. It's not all doom and gloom. Remember that. The science is incredible. Anthropic's Claude 4 at 5 model autonomously browsed scientific journals and proposed a new chemical recipe for batteries that humans had not thought of. In Japan, they rolled out an AI system for the elderly that predicts heart attacks 24 hours before they happen. This is not hype. This is saving lives right now. The robots are waking up. China's Unitree Robotics has started mass production of the G1 humanoid. 
it's priced specifically to undercut Western rivals. And Tesla released FSD version 13. For the first time in select zones in Austin and Shanghai, you can take your wheel hands off the wheel completely, unsupervised driving. The trend embodied AI. AI is getting hands, feet, and wheels. There is one company betting everything on safety. Elia Suskever's startup SSI Safe Superintelligence raised $3 billion. They have no product. They are not selling a chatbot. Their only goal is to solve alignment, making sure that when superintelligence arrives, it does not accidentally destroy us. Investors are pouring billions into this just as insurance. Now, finally, the big question everyone is asking, will I lose my job? Surprisingly, the data says not yet. A CNN analysis found that jobs exposed to AI actually grew by 1.7% last month. Right now, AI is helping people work, not replacing them. In Brazil, the Supreme Court used AI to cut their case backlog by 30%. It's making the systems faster, not firing the judges. And in India, just attracted $80 billion in big tech investment. Tech giants like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google committed nearly $80 billion to India's AI ecosystem, including data hubs. This influx positions India as an AI powerhouse, driving economic growth, job creation, and advancements in sectors like agriculture and healthcare. We are in the integration phase. If you learn to use these tools, you become more valuable. Finally, let's summarize from this week's AI news. One, geopolitics. The supply chains are decoupling. It's US versus China on hardware. Two, on tech, we have moved from chatting to acting with agentic AI. Three, trust. Regulation is splintering and verifying what is real is now our biggest challenge. As we head into 2026, the question is not what can AI do? It is who controls and what AI does. The AI with Arun show has a top 10 trends, AI trends, to watch out for in 2026 and you'll see the link to that video in the description below if you're interested to learn more about where is ai heading in 2026 with that we come to the end of the show please support our work by joining us as a member all you have to do is go to the description and at the very bottom you will see a link to join us as a sustaining member and if you learned anything in this video please like share and subscribe to the ai with Arun show thank you so much for watching we'll be back soon